Take a look at the person next to you And say God loves you and I love you too Now feel the love in the sanctuary Lift your voice and repeat after me We come together Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of Springfield on this sunshiny morning. I heard someone say this morning that when the sun's shining, everything's okay, no matter what the temperature happens to be. We're going to get started this morning with a song called Good Morning World. It's number 10 in your blue book. Great thing. 
things are coming my way. Here comes the sun up in the sky. Here comes a blue bird passing by. And all the world awakes to say, May joy be yours today. May joy be yours today. Thank you, Alyssa and Gay. Well, today we have lit the Christ candle, and as a part of our connection to the Greater Unity Movement, we connect and hold ministries in prayer each week. And so this week, we hold all the ministries in the state of Missouri, <laughs> the home of unity. And so we hold them in prayer, and let us go into prayer for a moment as we are joining hearts and minds together across many miles with other Unity churches around the world. And our hearts join with everyone on this planet, all seven plus billion of us, each of us, spiritual beings, light shining. Thank you, God, for this day and this moment. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We are so glad you are here to join us today for worship. We extend a special welcome to those of you visiting today for the first time. On your way in today, you should have received a welcome packet. We also have a gift for you. Please see one of our greeters after today's service. Unity is a worldwide spiritual movement. We are an exclusive community and we welcome all people. Now our announcements, and this one just in, hot off the press, from Nancy. Nancy would like to thank the Hospitality Committee for all they have done during her recent illness. Linda Schneider, Becky Grumman, Carol Strick, Mary Fierce, Kathy Holcomb, Frank Wilhite, Vicki Powers, Alyssa Furling, and especially Becky Phillips for filling in for Nancy during this time. We will have a potluck on birthday Sundays from now on, and there will be a sign-up sheet posted in Kane Hall. The rest of the month, we will have drinks, and if anybody wants to bring a snack, they're welcome. I would like to have these that uh, we just named stand. So if you were one of the people that we just mentioned, please stand. And let's all give them a round of applause for what they have done. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Especially Alyssa, Frank, Vicki, and Becky, who paid for, prepared, and cleaned up faithfully over most of last year. If I missed anyone, I'm sorry. Thanks again for, to Reverend Alden uh, for delivering the message. Actually, I did, so... I just got to read it a little more closely than that, Chris. Okay. On Tuesdays at 11 a.m., Peggy Tell will host our Unity Prayer Service in Zoom. This is a space to support with prayer those on our prayer list, on our hearts, and in our community. Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., Karen Kelly will lead the gathering meditation via Zoom, creating a sacred space for quiet, introspective meditation. You are invited to join in the monthly drumming circle with Dave Tell on Thursday, February 15th at 6 p.m. held in Margaret Kane Hall. Next Sunday, Reiki treatments will be offered after the service in the chat room. Use the sign-up sheet located in the foyer to receive a short 12 to 15 minute treatment. Who and what is Unity of Springfield? Come find out on Wednesday, March 6th at 7 p.m. This class is open to everyone and is a good refresher class. It is required for those wanting to become members of the church. We will cover topics such as unity history, essential unity principles, and membership basics. 
co-facilitated by the Licensed Unity Teachers and the Minister. Sign up in the foyer. Emails are sent out weekly that have information on current happenings and how to join in events. Also, check out our website for up-to-date information at unityofspringfieldil.org. A brief Illini update. Uh, in the Big Ten, there's Purdue and there's everybody else. I'm afraid we fell in with everybody else yesterday. Uh, a special thanks, thank you to Myra Taylor for coordinating the inspection of the church rental property and all the sprucing up of our building and grounds. So thank you, Myra. Creating our lives and our world through the thoughts and beliefs we hold in mind is a spiritual principle we practice at Unity of Springfield. We also know this truth together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the source of all good. In our Unity vision statement, again, together, a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And our unity mission statement, again, together, we recognize God is love individualized in all people. Therefore, we provide a positive environment for spiritual growth that empowers all to be God's love in the world. And at this time, I would invite up Deb Smith to share with us today's daily word. Good morning. The word for today is strength. The affirmation, centered in divine strength, I am confident and peaceful. If I find myself struggling to bear the weight of a heavy load, if I am wondering how much farther I can travel or how much longer I can carry on, I rely on my spiritual strength to keep me going. When I align my thoughts with this divine gift and not on the weight I carry or the distance I travel, I'm tapping into the power of God, expressing as me. Through divine strength, I am renewed and refreshed. I have everything I need to stay the course. Knowing the presence of God comes to me through many channels. I may ask for help and accept it graciously when it comes. I give myself breaks and make time for prayer and my other spiritual practices. Through it all, I remain strong and grateful for God within me. And from the scriptures, from Ephesians 6.10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. And the word again for today is strength. Please join me with the affirmation. Centered in divine strength, I am confident and peaceful.
Take a deep breath. Breathe in the air, the energy, the spirit in which we live and move and have our being. Breathe that in to your body, your heart, your mind, your entire being. Breathe in and exhale. And as we exhale, we let go of all of the thoughts, emotions, and challenges that we all face. Right now, in this sacred moment and sacred space, we are here to experience and to know the truth of our nature, of who we are. And let us know that we are and always have been spiritual beings God's prized creation. Children of God. We are spiritual beings having a human experience in which we learn and grow and come to understand many times who we are. The master teacher Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say, I am the light of the world. He said, you. He meant all of us, everybody, regardless of differences in heritage, background, and even religion. And when we make that connection, that inner connection, our awareness with the core of our being, when we embrace the inner light that is always shining within our hearts, We are connecting with and identifying with the spiritual being of us. Feel that truth right now. Let it fill you. Let it lift you up. Let it bring clarity, understanding, joy, and enthusiasm. And it's not that we don't experience dark moments challenging times or some difficult life lesson. We all do. But we recognize that these are simply a part of our journey, part of our process, part of our path of returning back to an awareness 
of who we are. As a being of light, love, and peace. And so for the next few moments, let us sit in the quiet, calm, and peace of this place or wherever we're experiencing this service right now. Letting the light within us shine forth. And it is from the stillness that we discover inner power, strength, and life. And as we move from this time of meditation and inner reflection back into the rest of this day, we do so renewed, aware of who we are, aware of who everybody else is, and filled with a confidence and an expectation of good. And so we give thanks for this opportunity we've had to experience this inner connection. And we do so in the name and through the power of the living Christ presence within us all. And so it is. Amen. I want to thank everybody who's a part of making this service so wonderful. And to Gay and Alyssa, and to Chris and Deb, and Chris again in the back there on PowerPoint, to Danny, our videographer. And we welcome everybody who's watching on Facebook and YouTube today. A um, few little things before I get into my talk. I want you to know that I'm fully automotively. Illinois. <laughs> yes, I took my cat's plate off my car. He's not happy about it, but he'll adjust. He'll adjust. <laughs> but we are fully here. I mean, this was so cool um, about finally getting our plates um, and getting our licenses uh, in process. We're supposed to get the plastic ones soon and our voter registration, all that stuff, and having our house sell and everything. You know, we, it, there's, a, there's something psychologically about being more here and not in two places, I guess is the word for it. And if you've ever moved, um, probably everybody here has moved at some point 
uh, you know what I'm talking about. So it's great to be here. And another thing that happened this week is that my official business cards have arrived. And they're back on the sign-up table for anybody who wants one. We got plenty to share. I ordered a thousand. I plan to be here a while. Thank you, thank you. That's so cool, you guys. And uh, so take these anytime you want them, and uh, you can hand them out to people. Uh, especially, take, take more than one, because on the back of these cards are the five unity principles. And what better way, if somebody says, oh, what are you guys all about? And they say, oh, here, here, and hand them out. So anyway, we got those for you. Another really cool thing that happened uh, this week, um, I was invited to an interfaith ministers group. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't in one in Florida. I was uh, involved with one in Wisconsin that I really enjoyed. And uh, this group is called the United Open and Affirming Faith Communities. And I want to uh, show you a flyer of an event coming up that they are doing in just two weeks. And this is a one-day retreat where you come. And it's really inexpensive. It's like $10 for the lunch. And if you want to come, sign up in the back. I plan to be there. Uh, I'm also supposed to be there uh, on, the, on the Thursday before to help set up tables at the Parkland Church, which is over on um, the west side of town a little bit. So if you know where Myers is, of course you know where Myers is. It's in that general area. And so I met online with these uh, fellow uh, local colleagues of mine, and they, on their agenda, had me right at the top to welcome me to town. You know how fe that felt really good. And so I got to, to, to share a little bit about who I was. But they are a wonderful group of clergy. This is a brand new group that started this past summer. Uh, something happened. I'm still want to find out what happened that precipitated the beginning of, of this group. But I'm so glad to be a part of it. And um, I wanted to get this in the announcements today. So I just put it you know, right in the front of my talk here. And I'm still learning more about it. But apparently there, there's information on the, um, the little... Um, brochure that's back there and uh, if you want to go to that it looks it looks like a lot of fun well tomorrow's Lincoln's birthday y'all knew that right? and when I saw this on the calendar I knew I had to do something special I'll be honest I've been using a lot of talks that are pre-owned certified you know what I mean by that? I've done before with a little polish, which has freed up my energy to meet with you. You know, if I had like oh, two dozen people sign up, I've already met with seven people and there are more signing up. And I have my planner today in the um, Margaret Kane Hall to sign more people up and I'll, we'll, get, we'll get to everybody. But hey, we're in Springfield. Lincoln is ours. Well, yeah, he was born in Kentucky. He grew up in Indiana. Those are just details. <laughs> Lincoln is ours. You can hardly go anywhere in town and not see Lincoln. He's everywhere. He's in restaurants and hotels and businesses. I haven't been to a school yet, but I bet he's there too. And he's also... at Walmart. And of course, there's this fav famous saying of Lincoln, I like shopping at Walmart because the prices are good and it's close to my house. <laughs> famous, famous quote. Well, what I found surprising, I went to Walmart for the first time, the, the one, I, I haven't been to the one on the west side of town, well, I'll get there eventually, but the one over here, not far away, and I was blown away to see Lincoln quotes when I walked in the door. Like, whoa, he is everywhere. He is omnipresent in Springfield, Illinois. And this quote, I do not think much of a man who is no wiser today than he was yesterday. So I took this photo and I put it on my Facebook page and my friends were responding, nah, that's photoshopped, isn't it? 
I said, no, it's not. I took this photo. And then I went on Google Photos and found some other photos and put them in response. And I said, no, this is for real. And then I started looking at this quote and thinking, they really say that? So I did some research. And I discovered that Pete Sherman, writing in Springfield's The State Journal Register, observed one of the two phrases attributed to Lincoln that run along the colonnades of the giant new store appeared to be fake. And he wrote, although the quote is attributed to Lincoln on a myriad of internet sites and pops up in some quotations in books and newspaper columns, no definitive collection of Lincoln's speeches, documents, or conversations mentioned the saying. Well, you just want to poo-poo everything, don't you? Abraham Lincoln brought an abundance of wisdom and leadership to his life. Skills that I'm sure that he developed throughout his upbringing and his service. Now, some of these sayings of his we might call attributed to Lincoln. And some are verified. So we have attributed, verified. Lincoln lore, huh? and he said that. He really said that. So what can we learn from him that can impact our lives in a positive and constructive way? How can Lincoln's sayings and wisdom contribute to our spiritual well-being? Well, back to this slide right here. Let's just start with this one. I do not think much of a man who is no wiser today than yesterday. Let us forgive his less than inclusive language. Remember, this is from a long time ago when everything was pretty um, male-dominated language. I mean, just look in the Bible from that era. You just don't find that kind of inclusive language that we're accustomed to today. But there's a lot of wisdom that comes with experience from which we can learn. And so if we keep repeating the same challenge and issue and experiences in life, and we stay the same old self, we stay the way that we've always been. There's no progress. What? Well, you didn't think so much of people that just kind of stayed stagnant and weren't making progress in life, that weren't transforming their lives and learning life's lessons. And if we don't do that ourselves, if we run into um, something along the way that pushes our buttons, that drives us crazy, and we don't learn from it, we're probably going to do what? Get another opportunity to do it again. So, next famous Lincoln quote, also found at Walmart. People are just as happy as they make up their minds to be. What he's saying is that happiness is always an inside job. It's an inside job. It's not determined by something out here, outer circumstances, or predicaments that we find ourselves in. That does not have to dictate to us our state of happiness. Happiness is a decision. It's a decision to bring joy to life, but it's always a decision. Now, I realize we're not happy 100% of the time. Nobody is. Well, not usually. I mean, we meet somebody who appears to be happy all the time. Every time we meet them, we kind of think to ourselves, I think they're masking an inner turmoil with that happy face. Could be. A lot of us put on a happy face even though we're dealing with stuff. And people ask us, how are you doing? We go, fine. And then when we go away, we're like, Ugh. yeah. Or it could be the person who appears to be happy and joyous pretty much every time we see them has been through a process of getting to that. 
has been through a process of working through their own inner responses and reactions to the challenges of life. They've learned a few things, and they've learned the most important thing. I can choose to be happy if I want to. So, attributed to Lincoln, if he said it, great. If he didn't say it, that's okay, too. But every time you go to Walmart, we're going to remind her it's an inside job. Most, Most of us have heard this one. You can you fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. I think he did say this. What was he getting at? What was he really trying to say? Don't try to fool anybody anytime. Don't try to fool people. Be honest, straightforward, transparent with everybody all the time. How hard is it to really do that? Apparently pretty hard. It's hard to not be a, I'm trying to think of language that's not too colorful. Someone who's not always revealing their authentic self. You can translate that whatever you want. And so it starts with ourselves, of being honest with ourselves, being straightforward with ourselves. And the way that we treat ourselves is always an indicator of how we're going to treat other people. So if we choose not to fool anybody, anytime, life suddenly becomes what? It becomes simpler, doesn't it? Less complicated. Less messy. More authentic. Why are we trying to fool anybody? The next Lincoln statement, I saw at the museum. It's a photo I took. As I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. This expresses my idea of democracy. Whatever differs from this to the extent of the difference is no democracy. We know he said or wrote this. There's a signature. Nobody is better than anybody else. There are no masters. There are no slaves in a real democracy, in a real balanced society. And so this sense of Equity, which is an expansion of equality, where outcomes are fair. There's a difference between those two words, equity and equality. You probably know that. That when this happens, when there is true equity in life, there's true democracy. Otherwise, it's something else, as he said, to the degree, okay? To the degree and to the extent of the difference. So there must be, as we move along, as we evolve as a society and as a planet, a greater sense of balance between people and not some sort of, um, I would call it contrived equality. We say there's something that's equal, but when you get right down to it, the experience is something different. I'm going to use myself as an example, if you don't mind. I have the title of reverend. Why is that? Why? I'll tell you what. Credentials. Credentials. It's hanging on the wall in my office. You want to make sure that all the stuff that I put on my resume is correct, just go in there. 
with the, the resume. resume. Yeah. Does, Does that, that piece of paper, paper make, make me the master, master and everybody, everybody else the uh, subjects? No. Heck no. And why is that? Because we are all, each one of us, everybody endowed with the same spiritual identity, the same spiritual self. That's our second unity principle. It's on the card. Our essence is of God, therefore we are inherently good. That's everybody. It's on the card. That makes it true. And it is the reality. I was recently asked by somebody in the church, how am I to be addressed? I said, whatever you're comfortable with. And they said back, well, the previous minister required reverend and their name. I'm like, OK. Reverend Alden. Reverend Alden Studebaker. Father Studebaker. I have three kids. Or just Alden. Whatever you're comfortable with. Do not call me Mr. Studebaker. That was my dad. Oh, if you want to call me Mr. Studebaker. Only if that makes you feel good. Um, you see what I'm talking about. I'm not way up here and everybody's you know, somewhere else. We're all spiritual beings. We're all human beings. We all have a history. We all have stuff we're working on. All of us, regardless of credentials. And so this concept of democracy, equity, equality, spiritual connectedness is punctuated by this familiar statement of Abraham Lincoln, one that he really did write and say. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. There it is. Famous quote. Everybody's heard it. We learned it in school. I think they're probably still teaching this in school. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. If we're going to live together in unity, if this is going to be the reality where all of us, regardless of how we look, our differences, that's going to happen. If this is the world we want to live in, where we're together in unity, where there's true democracy, where people take responsibility for their own happiness, their own experience, where people make spiritual progress rather than constantly repeating unlearned lessons, where people of all backgrounds get along and simply show respect, then we must take Abraham Lincoln at his word and acknowledge that he had something to say to add to our spiritual process. And a couple other things about Abraham Lincoln I need to point out is number one, he was a human being. He had kids. I see heads going like this. You've been to the museum too. I thought it was one of the funniest things I saw at the museum. I mean, you know, yeah, it is. <laughs> and one other um, important um, photo to share with you. 
Um, Actually, um, <laughs> for those of you who do not know who Keith Richards is, Keith Richards is my spiritual mentor. He's a guitarist for the Rolling Stones, if you don't know. He's 80 years old, and he's still alive. That's why he's my mentor. Gives me great hope, great hope. And uh, back, well, actually, this is a song that um, goes along with the, uh, with the talk today. My strap did not fall down and make me drop my guitar. <laughs> I saw you today at the Unity of Springfield. A cup of coffee in your hand. I knew you were going to meet your spiritual community. At your feet was someone grand. You can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want but if you try sometime well you just might find you get what you need went down to the meditation to get my share of some prayer singing we're gonna have an inspiration and well if we don't well it don't matter anyway that's what I said everybody now you can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want well if you try sometime well you just might find you get what you need oh yeah I went down to the unity bookstore get you a copy of the five principles of unity I was standing in line with a Mr. Fillmore and man did he look pretty good we decided that we would have a soda my favorite flavor cherry lime I sung my song to a Mr. Fillmore and he said one word to me and that was unity that's what he said everybody you can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want you can't always get what you want but if you try sometime you just might find you get what you need, oh yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, we're going to sing it. another song. It's in the blue book. I love the blue book. I knew the red book pretty well, but I didn't know the blue book until I got here. So we're going to sing, Blessed Be, page four, everybody. Come to listen.
Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me. Cause now I know I'm in the flow, I'm finally free, oh blessed be. Gonna set it free, let things be, let the thrill of life carry me. prepare for the receiving of our offering. We appreciate everybody's support of this ministry and its vision and its mission. And there are a number of ways that you can support this church. One way is through our website. There's a donate link that you can go to on there. You can also mail us a donation at the Unity of Springfield at our address. And here today in the room, we have these bowls out for your tithes, donations, and love offerings. And so let's join together in blessing all the gifts that come in here with our blessing statement, which is almost here. It's all right. Here we go together. Divine love through me blesses us and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. All right, everybody. Now let us join together in praying the prayer for protection and singing the peace song. Shall we? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. You've got it. 